Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Serve my country, be the best fighter pilot in the Navy. Sir, I gotta do something here. I, I, I still can't believe it. I gotta give you your dream shot. You two characters are going to top gun. You are the top 1% of all naval aviators. The elite will make it better. Every time you go up in the air, you're unsafe. That's right. I am dangerous. It takes a lot more than just fancy flying. I got a family to think about. I can't afford to blow this. You're the only family I've got. I'm not gonna let you down. Tell them in this school is about combat. Ten more seconds, then I've got him. There are no points for second place. Detect! Detect! What you do up there is dangerous. But you've got to go on. There are MIGs in the area and tensions are high. If you witness a hostile act, you will return fire. Gentlemen, this is the real thing. This is what you've been trained for. Three makes dead ahead, coming down the left side. You are America's best. One makes over the lock high, one makes over the lock high. Make us proud. I got radar lock, you clear the fire. I got a good lock. Fire! I'm firing. Tom Cruise, Kelly McGillis, Top Gun. You never close your eyes anymore when I kiss your lips there's no tenderness right before in your fingertips like before in your fingertips you're trying <laughs> hard not to show it but baby baby i know it you'd lost, you that. lost you've lost that love you've and lost feeling me. he's killed the loving feeling is what he's done oh that love and feeling this is like getting your necking with your girl and then suddenly you're like would you lick my foot? And she's just like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's gone. Dumb. <laughs> Welcome to the Fire Pit Podcast. I am your host, Tom, British name Thompson. I'm Josh. I'm British Dan. Reginald. I'm Dan, British name Nigel. And tonight's episode, we are watching... Top Gun. Danger Seminal. Zone. Danger Zone, son. Uh, Josh, Dan, I feel the need. The need, the need for, for speed. speed. Great. Good, good, good timing. Good timing. I think we could do better on that one. So let's let's take that one again. Okay. Gentlemen, I feel the need. Need. I'll need. have what good. she's had. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong Meg Ryan film. Damn it. <laughs> One more time, one more time. We can get this. We can get this. All right. <clears throat> Gentlemen, I feel the need. Engage. Uh, it's been revoked. <laughs> Family guy. <laughs> Wait, how's it going again? Oh, it's I feel the need. And then he says, I make this look good. That's later. That's you know later. The between you and me is? <laughs> I feel the need for speed. Yes. That's the difference between you and me. But before we begin this podcast, before we begin talking about the previous movie we watched, which was Starship Troopers, and what's become of Michael Ironside, and what we're getting ourselves into, which is one of the 80s of the 80s movies ever made in the 80s, we have a discussion to have, guys. We uh, Last week, we decided that with the 4th of July, just two months away not even two months we can't let an opportunity like this slide so independence day is the goal question is how are we going to get there from top gun so we've Tom's ha already got the celebrity going and he's all like i'm just going to ignore the uh yeah the planned script. intro the planned yeah. introduction and i'm just yeah. going to talk about the last week's movie and then i'm going to take josh's thunder away and talk about the Path to Independence Just Day. Piss all over it. Dan. Yep. Just piss all, all over right, it. Yeah. All, right, no, all right, all right, all right, all right. Why don't all right, we right, just right. why don't we just name this podcast Tom and who the fuck are those other guys? Still think it's a good idea. 
All right, let's start this let's, over yeah, again let's, let's from the intro. top. Yeah, let's do this intro again from the top. <laughs> All right, welcome to the fire pit. I thought it was I'm, going great. Sorry. I'm Tom. Take three. <laughs> take, I think it's take five now, Josh. All right, welcome to the fire pit podcast. I'm Tom, also Thompson. This I'm Josh, weekend... also Reginald. I'm Dan, Who's also us? Nigel. And this weekend, we're watching Top Gun starring Tom Cruise. But before we begin, I want to just take a quick peek at our last, um, what are we going to call them? The guys that we're focusing on. Um, I wouldn't say we're, our... we focus. We don't really focus on an actor or an actress in a movie. We just pick them and then. I've been uh, talking to the word branch. Like we yeah, branch, branch out. And we do talk a little bit about them. I mean, like last week we watched Starship Troopers uh, mm-hmm. by a uh, movie uh, directed by Paul Verhoeven. Uh, the actor we used to link our last movie was Michael Ironside. And we did talk about Michael Ironside a little bit, how he's had a, just a hell of a career. In Hollywood. I mean, he's he's never been the star of any movie, but he's he usually puts in a, an unforgettable performance when he uh, when he does. He's also had a, quite the career as a voice actor. He's the voice of Dark Side in the DC movies. He's the voice of Sam Fisher in the Splinter Cell video games for all of our gamer fans out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's in a, pretty much every single TV show ever, sci-fi show. I mean, yeah, if there's in- yeah, if there was a science fiction television show made in the 90s or up to the mid 2000s, the mid 2010s, Michael Ironside's been in at least one episode. Well, he was General um, Lane in Smallville. Right. That's right. He was, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right there on the article. Yep. Uh, I guess he's going to be, he might be in the uh, Superman and Lois Lane show that's coming up here in either 2002, 2001. Um, I can't wait to not watch that one. Yeah, there's also a bit of a fan movement uh because of the recently announced Zack snyder cut for justice league that since dark side will be seen in that movie that if he's at least heard it should be michael ironside's voice oh, so, great yeah that would be like not having a god damn it now guy's name peter cullen play optimus prime yeah that, yeah it's like i mean i'm sure there's a, there's there's been other voice actors that have voiced optimus prime and voiced him well but none none do it as well yeah he's uh yeah, Michael Ironside, he's going to be Sam Fisher in the next coming uh, game, but he's not. he might be in this uh, Superman and Lois Lane show. He is not going to be in the Top Gun sequel. Oh, that sucks. Oh, that yeah. sucks. But, I mean, you know, his, his character is an older pilot in this movie. He plays mm-hmm. Jester, one of the instructors, and mm-hmm. he was he's older in the movie. Like they mentioned, that he, I think he's a Vietnam vet in the movie and all that, so... It kind of makes sense that he might not be in the sequel because his character might be retired from the oh. military by then. Oh, definitely, yes. I don't yeah, think so, Tom Skerritt's going to be in it either. So, Dan, how did we get to uh, Top Gun from our previous movies? From our previous movies, uh, we'll go back the last four weeks. Uh, we watched Doom, and Doom had Carl Urban in it. So then from there we watched... Well, actually, four weeks. Four weeks before Doom would have been Rundown. Rundown had The Rock. We then went to Doom, which had Carl Urban in it, as long as long uh, alongside The Rock. We then watched Pathfinder, and boy, did we watch Pathfinder. Uh, more, like <laughs> I, I we got, we, more like we got through Pathfinder. We love we survived. Pathfinder. Yeah, we got, we got through Pathfinder, we which had, also had Carl Urban in it, and it also had Clancy Brown who took us to last week's movie, Starship Troopers, which, like I said, was a movie directed by Paul Verhoeven, an action sci-fi commentary film, which a lot of, uh, I think we walked away from that one a hell of a lot happier than we were after Pathfinder. We were pleasantly, <laughs> we were pleased with that movie. We, ha- I admittedly hadn't seen it in a while, and it mm. was, uh, I forgot how much I really, really, really enjoyed that movie. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's one of those movies that ages like fine wine. Yeah. It's it better yeah. every viewing. And I think we, if anything, proved that point, at least to us. Um, yeah, last week. Uh, I felt the same way. I, I was excited to watch it when we decided that we were going to do Starship Troopers. I was like, oh, you know, I haven't seen that movie in a while, but I remember enjoying it when I watched it. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm just like, I'll sit down and I'll get some popcorn. And it's just, if anything, it's a fun little action movie. And I forgot just how good of an action movie it is. It's it's a lot more than just a popcorn film. It's got some mm-hmm. social social commentary and good acting in it, uh, and good direction, love the camera work. You have just wonderful palate cleanser from the week mm. that was. Of course, it's like eat your next meal after your previous meal was dog shit. It's like anything's right. going to be better. Yeah, but, but it, it's still a good movie. I'm not going to take anything still, yeah, yeah. from Starship Troopers. Yeah. So yeah. what's our connection from uh, Starship Troopers to Top Gun? 
Uh, well, in Starship Troopers, uh, the teacher slash uh, instructor they have at the very beginning of the movie, and also he becomes uh, their uh, commander or their sergeant lieutenant. later on. Uh, lieutenant later on in the movie is Michael Ironside, who connects us to Top Gun. He will be playing the role of Viper in Top Gun, uh, one of the instructors at the. Uh, I thought it was Jester. You said Jester. Or, I'm sorry, Viper. Yeah, my mistake. Viper is uh, my, uh, Tom, Tom Skerritt. Skerritt. Skerritt's character. Yeah, he plays Jester who is one of the instructors at the uh, flight school that our main characters are competing in. So, And, uh, well, we have a special segment for our longtime listeners now. Here we but, go. Uh, All right. This is how you segue, <laughs> Tom. <laughs> we have a plan. We, If you listened last week, we wanted to try to make it to uh, watch Independence Day on Independence Day weekend. So we have approximately, from this movie, five movies. So we have played kind of a seven degrees of Kevin Bacon game, which, you know, is kind of the heart of this uh, podcast. So we're trying to connect Top Gun to Independence Day in five steps. Six degrees from Kevin Bacon. Whatever. (laughs) Um, uh, Damn you, Dan. (laughs) (laughs) So our our homework for the week was each of us was supposed to come uh, back with three um, basically paths to getting there. Three unique paths. So we haven't spoken about it all week, and it's been painful because I've really been wanting to talk to you guys about it. Yeah, I was so, so desperate. To, I was so desperate to to tell somebody what my path from Top Gun to Independence Day was. I uh, bored my mom with it yesterday while I was out running around with her. So, so we are going to go alphabetical. So Dan, then me, then Tom. But we're going to give our top pick, and uh, we will discuss it for a few seconds, and then we'll go on, and I'll give mine, and then Tom will give his. But as I imagine Dan has more experience with how Tom dealt with homework in high school. Uh, he didn't complete the homework and only came up with one path. So, Dan? <laughs> I always got the homework right the first time. I didn't have to redo okay, my so, like some people. All right. Well, I I came up with three different paths. Um, I actually almost came up with a fourth, but then I realized we get to Independence Day in five movies, not six. So... I had to scrap that one, but uh, I've got three paths. Each path actually has really good movies in it. Um, they're all movies I think we'd enjoy. Um, they're all movies that I think all of us have seen at some point in time or another. The only one path has a movie I would call, it's not fair to call it a boring movie, but it's just, it's the other movies are so action packed that they'll go by quickly, but this movie's a thinking man's movie. So, all right, well, let's give us your, first, your top one, your, your favorite path. My my favorite path is probably the Val Kilmer path. So Val Kilmer is in Top Gun. He plays Iceman. Uh, Val Kilmer is then in Tombstone. Ooh, Ooh, good one. Yeah. And Michael Bean is in Tombstone. Michael Bean is in The Rock. Oh, shoot. My, oh, my, man. My, oh. Yeah. Michael Bean's in The Rock with Nicolas Cage. Oh. No, 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 hold, on, hold on. Hold on. Who's in Lord of War. Ooh. Is, Lord Damn of War. It. Lord of War. Now this one is where we get more the the actress in Lord of War that I used to link is and may, mostly she's more famous for TV than she is for movies. But Lord of War has Bridget Moynihan in it. Bridget Moynihan's an I Robot, I with, robot with Will Will Smith, Will Smith who's in Independence <laughs> Day. Nice. Dang. That's, a, that's a good one. That's oh, my favorite one. path. That's my favorite path. I think all of those movies are fantastic films for this podcast. I think they're all movies that the three of us would enjoy immensely. And they're just, they're, they're fun movies. And two of the movies on my list are two of my favorite action movies of all time. I fucking love tombstone and I love the rock. I think that's yeah. one of that. That's it. It's Michael Bay's best film you can believe by, a mile, by a mile, but that's also because he has got really good actors in that movie too. Not just Nick. He also got like Ed Harris is in that movie. Sean, Sean Connery. Connery. Is Sean, yeah, Sean Connery's in that movie. Uh, so he's got some really good actors in the rock and it, plus it's got a great score and it's just, and it's also a, one of those movies where Nicholas cage plays Nicholas cage, but he plays him very well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nicholas cage is either really good or really bad. Is he a good actor? <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys have ever watched the uh, YouTube channel, Ralph, the movie maker, but he always does this like Nicholas cage a thon around like when, usually when most people are doing like Halloween type stuff during October, he always does this Nicholas cage a thon. And one of the movies he watched was like a really good Nicolas Cage movie. And the next movie was one of those direct to DVD bargain bin shit. Mm -hmm. And he goes, this is what's so confusing about Nicolas Cage is he comes in and he does this great performance. And then he turned around and he says, I'm just going to make a bunch of shit. (laughs) 
Oh my God. And trying to go down his IMDB list because Nicholas Cage has had some problems with the tax man. Mm-hmm. And so therefore why, Nicholas, why he takes so many jobs. Well, mm-hmm. uh, Nicholas Cage's IMDB page from 2014 to about 2020 is him basically say yes to every single script that got mailed to him. He's in so many good movies. Well, I think uh, we talked last week about the strength of a director that you can get a good performance out of a bad actor and a great yep. performance out of a, a mediocre actor. The truth <laughs> of a director is how well you can rein in Nicolas Cage. Yes. Yes. Or John, play to his strengths. Seconds. You play to his strengths. You know, when you, when you play to Nicolas Cage's strengths, he's the, the, the movies are really good. It's just, you know, when Nicolas Cage goes into being uh, Mr. Crazy, then you get Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. So, <laughs> nice. you know. So anyways, that's my first path. That's my most favorite. Um, I have a second favorite as well, but we'll get to that one well, here in a little bit. We'll, but, yeah. we'll circle back to you. Mm-hmm. All right. So, so my turn. Now, um, I'm going to kind of slightly cheat because I had two different paths that I found at the last second. But uh, it's only the last two, two of the six total. So... I uh, took the path from Top Gun using Tom Skerritt to go to Ooh. Contact. Now, I want to also say real quick, I dedicate this list to Tom because he inspired me to find this path. So, Contact, <laughs> you take Jodie Foster to, wait for it, Maverick, <gasps> which has <laughs> James Garner. James Garner is in Space Cowboys. Okay, I'm seeing there's, this. There's two paths off of Space Cowboys. You could go Tommy Lee Jones to Men in Black. To Independence Day, or mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you can go Space Cowboys, James Cromwell, First Contact, Independence Day through Brett Spiner. That's a good one. Your, your, your list is really good on the back end there. I'm not looking forward to trying to get through Contact, but uh, I love oh, Contact. It's really? great. Three, oh, it's three, an awesome movie. I just recently three, rewatched it. It's awesome. three, and a half, three, and a, three hours to find out the aliens are fucking father. Anyways. Plus, it's got the Busey kid from Starship yeah. Troopers in yeah. it. Oh, it does. And, and yep. a pre- priest, Matthew McConaughey. But come on, that's a book by Carl. It's based off a book by Carl Sagan. I'm not yeah. saying the movie's not good. It's just one of those movies like I've seen it oh, once I and I have no desire to see it again. That's a oh, great. They should have said a poet. So good. Yeah, that's why I like that one. I saw Contact. I'm like, oh yes. And I like how uh, Space Cowboys is one of my guilty indulgences. I love that movie. So I saw, and when you said Mavericks, and I'm just like, okay, I've got a goal now. I've got to find a way to get there watching Mavericks. I love Maverick. This is a good list you have, although I'm, I'm sorry, J- Dan's got one up on you. Space Cowboys is kind of like a weaker one right there. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's about like I that, said, though. it's a guilty indulgence, but I like yeah. that movie. Yeah, Space Cowboys. And honestly, as much as I joked about it, uh, Maverick is a. It's an okay movie. Um, it's, I love Maverick. Oh, I love. Yeah, I love. Oh yeah. Wait, Maverick. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong movie. Maverick's the one with Mel Gibson as the card player, right, in the Old West. Yeah. yeah. Never mind. I love that movie. Never mind. Yeah. I forgot. I, I got. Well, what did you think it was? Huh? Well, when did you think it was? I don't. I was thinking of some other western, but I, I wasn't. Um. Yeah. No, I like Maverick. I forgot. But I mean, that gives you. Uh, like I said, James Cromwell to First Contact. First Contact. To Independence Day. That's good. That, that, was, that was a little flavor for Dan. So that... I'll, I'll happily watch First Contact again. <laughs> All right. Well, that's Josh's two right there. Uh, uh, Nigel, I think it'll go back to you. Then I'll uh, round out the last of the list. Now, we each have three, Tom. Oh, dear Lord. One. I said that was a, kind of a cheat. That was a 1.5 for me. I still have two other lists. All yeah. right. All right. So, so you can either go now or you can wait till I give my third and go very, very last. Well, save the best for last. So. All right. <laughs> so, we we'll, so we're going we're gonna to circle back to you, Dan. Give me your number two list. All right. My number two list is, believe it or not, take the one actress in this film that actually didn't go on to have a mega huge Hollywood career, Kelly McGillis, uh, who plays mm-hmm. the love interest in this movie. Um, so yeah, Top Gun, take Kelly McGillis from Top Gun. And now this is the movie we're going to have to get through, but it's a good movie. Mm-hmm. Kelly McGillis is in Witness. Oh, that's is, a good film. It's a really good film, but it's, it's not an, an action movie. So it's, it's, it, you know, it, it, it's got a much different pace, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. it's a good movie. It's Harrison Ford's in it. You know, it's a good movie, really good movie. But Witness has Danny Glover. Danny Glover's in Lethal Weapon. Yep. Oh God. Damn we it. just watched that yep. today. <laughs> Second best Christmas film ever made. Yep. It's funny. It's because it's it opens with Jingle Bell Rock, and me and my wife look at each other. We're like, "Is this another Christmas movie?" It's it is. Another- it's a Christmas movie. 
So no, there was weapon. even a meme. There was even a meme going around at Christmas saying everyone's arguing about whether or not uh, Die Hard's a Christmas movie, but everyone always forgets about Lethal Weapon. Yeah, I know, I did. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Lethal Weapon with Gary Busey. Yep. Take Gary Busey. He's in Under Siege with Steven Seagal and Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, he is, isn't he? Yeah, and it's a really, it's a good movie. It's a Steven Seagal film, but it, 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 he's he's good in that movie. It, it's that movie. That's again playing to his strengths. It's a good movie. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like Under Siege Two, which is a bad film. It's a very very bad film. It should be <laughs> it should be ashamed of itself. It's so bad. Um, it goes back to that discussion we had a while back on sequels that just destroy the original. Yeah, that's gonna be, that that might be uh that may be the uh, a month long thing is is bad sequels to good films. Anyways, Under Siege with Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones is in Men in Black with Will Smith, who's in Independence Day. Nice. So I so I did have two lists where the number five film had the same actor. They're just different movies, but they both take us to Independence Day. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. So that was my number two list. All right, my number two list. Um, I went ahead and went off of uh, from Top Gun using Tom Cruise, mm -hmm. and I think Tom, you're gonna like this one. So Tom Cruise to Tropic Thunder. <laughs> okay. I should have known. I really uh, should have so, known. Hang on, hang on. Jack Black is in Tropic Thunder. He's yes. also in a little movie called High Fidelity. Damn it, that's part that's one of my lists right there. Go on. Yeah, 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 yeah. High Fidelity stars John Cusack. Yep. Who was in 1408? Ooh. Oh, and damn. Tony Shaloub was in 1408 and he yeah. also stars in Men in Black. Oh, yeah. which has got Will Smith. Will, Smith. Will Smith. Will Smith all roads, man. I you guys forgot. are thinking. See, I got to High Fidelity and I saw Tony Shaloub and I couldn't, I, I don't know why I didn't click on him on IMDb, but I would have seen he was in Independence Day. He's the, yeah, he's the alien kids can get his head shot off and all yep. that. Yeah. Though, is he in it long enough to count? Yeah, he's, he's, I would say, yeah. He's in it he's, for like two, two scenes or so. Yeah, he's got two or three scenes in the film and, and, you know, so he's yes, in the movie. I would, I would count him. him. We could even uh, use him in the third movie. He's got another additional couple scenes in the third film. Yeah, because honestly, in like I used Tombstone with Michael Bean and took Michael Bean over to The Rock. Michael Bean's only in a couple of minutes in that movie, and then his character's killed off. Mm -hmm. Surprise, surprise. He's like Sean Bean back then. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so anyways, go on. I, I could have easily made it, because you could have used Tim Robbins from Top Gun to High Fidelity. That's what I, that, was, that was one of the paths I was taking was Tim but Robbins. I, but I, I was missing, I needed to go from... I needed a, a movie in between Top Gun and High Fidelity, so that's why I'd like, oh, they got Jack Black, so I could go from Tom Cruise to Tropic Thunder. Mm -hmm. Tropic Thunder is one of those movies I'll watch anytime it's on TV, because I, I love that movie. <laughs> yeah, that's a good movie. That's a good film. That's a good yeah. list. I like that one. Still not as good as my number one list, though. Yeah, Val Kilmer passed. Yeah, I think kind yeah, of yeah, the, yeah. yeah I, I, I'm not, I, maybe I'm biased. I am biased, but I at least admit my bias. Uh, I think the Val Kilmer path is the most fun. Like that's going to be that to me just would be a really fun six weeks. My f final list that I had mapped out was Top Gun with Meg Ryan. Mm -hmm. Take Meg Ryan to inner space. Mm. Ooh, good choice. Yeah, with Dennis Quaid. Dennis Quaid is in the right stuff. Oh, 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 oh good one. damn good it! One. Yeah. 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 Okay, the right stuff stars Ed Harris, who's in Apollo 13 <laughs> with Tom Hanks. Who's in Big with Robert Loggia, who is in Independence Day. Robert Loggia is the general. The that's uh, what I thought. That's what the, I thought. That's yeah. a good. One. Oh, that's right. He's the uh, the CEO guy in Big, isn't he? Nice. I like yeah. that. Yeah. See, that was the thing is I was trying to find a route not using uh, Will Smith. Yeah, I did too. That was my that was my like I was dedicated to finding a route that didn't use Will Smith and or Tommy Lee Jones linking Independence Day. So because it felt yeah. like like all the paths I took ended up with Men in Black, and that's why I was happy I found the one using Brent Spiner. All right, so my number three list. This is that one I was telling you about where two of the actors are in two separate films, so you could swap the films out. Mm -hmm. So my number one is you go from Top Gun to Val Kilmer to Red Planet. I remember that was the summer of the uh, Mars mission movies. Yeah, with Red... yeah. Because I almost used uh, Mission to Mars starring Tim Robbins as a earlier one. But Red Planet also stars Carrie Ann Moss. And there's two movies that Carrie Ann Moss is in with Joey Panali... Joey Pants. Joey Pants. <laughs> Wait, what? Go on. Hold on. Back up. What was the beginning of this? It's Val Kilmer, right? To Red Planet. Val Kilmer to Red Planet. Red okay. Planet to. You can swap both of these movies because both actors are present in both movies. The Matrix and Memento. Okay. And then you go from either of those movies using Joey Pants to Bad Boys. Ooh, I like that movie. From Bad Boys to Independence Day. Because Will Smith. Because Will, Will Smith. Smith. Okay. Well, I like I like that path. I yeah, I kind I kind of like that one. 
I like it better than your first one. <laughs> I'm just, I, I know you guys like it. Maybe I'm the outlier here. Maybe one day we'll get to that movie, you know, but I've just never been a big fan of contact. So I I'm love kinda... contact. I think less of you now though, Dan, but it's okay. Yeah. Still... God, that's even with a Star Trek movie in there, Tom. Can you believe that? I know. Right. Built dirty. All right. We've Tom, had the so rest. Yep. We've had the rest now for the best. Okay. So I technically have a 0.5 for this one was as well. Cause I wasn't sure about my math. So List number one, we're obviously Michael, Michael Ironside, the Top Gun. Uh, for, in Top Gun, we're going to use Tom Cruise to go to Color of Money, which Ooh. has Paul Newman. And Paul Newman is in the Hudsucker Proxy. And from that, we'd get Tim Robbins, who is in Tape Heads with John Cusack. And from John Cusack, you go to the Ice Harvest with Dennis Quaid, who takes us to Independence Day. Dennis Quaid is not in Independence Day. Yeah, he's not. Randy Quaid is an Independence Day. Randy Quaid is an Independence Day. His more insane brother is well, in Independence Day. Dennis Quaid. Have, so so Dennis you're telling Quaid. me that Tom not only <laughs> fucked up the homework, but he turned it incomplete? <laughs> the state of him. Uh, <laughs> he messed up the assignment so completely. He botched it at the end. He fumbled on the goal line, ladies and gentlemen. He but I'm picking up the fumble because I do have a 0.5 for this. So swapping out <laughs> from Tim Robbins, you can still go to High Fidelity, which has Jack Black, who was an enemy of the state with Will Smith. Uh, that's, that's a good one. That's yes. A good one. Picking it up at the end. Okay. Well, I wouldn't say you picked it up at the end. I would say you fumbled. They recovered, you, you ran it back to the 30, paper, and you fumbled you again. turned it back in for maybe a C plus. <laughs> but because you already turned it in, you're, you're not getting a B. Yeah. yeah. You're not getting a B. You're not getting a B. That whole confidence in your voice when you went, Dennis Quaid, who's in Independence Day. And you're like, no, he's not. <laughs> no, he's not. Bats Dude. aren't bugs. <laughs> Yeah, uh, just that, that that confidence, that swagger, walking around like proud cock, just like, oh, Dennis Quaid, who's in Independence Day. And you're like, no, he's not. <laughs> he has never been. He's not even in the sequel. Although a lot of people, yeah, yeah no. You, no just said, you said proud cock, which made me think of Hancock. And I'm like, why didn't we go through Hancock? I didn't even think about that movie. Oh, yeah, that's, oh, uh, yeah, that's a superhero that movie the, with Will Smith. Yeah, yeah. yeah Char- Charlie Theron in that one. So we've got our list here, guys. So what's uh? So Dan, go. What was your first list again? My first this list. Is probably sacrilege, but Tombstone is not one of my favorite movies. Really? Okay, fine. You know what? I'm no, giving. I'm just you a pass. about to say. No, I'm giving you a pass, even though you didn't give me one on contact. But I will give you a pass if you don't like Tombstone, because I will just say, you know what? We'll just agree to disagree. Well, then, what I'm, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not saying I don't like the movie, though. I will. I will like the movie. It's just, it's not one of my favorite movies. So if I didn't have to watch it again, it wouldn't be a big deal. But I don't well, say I don't the, like the movie. Well, let's I, look at the I guess I'm kind of in the same here. opinion as you are of Contact. Like, if I never watch the movie again, it's not going to be, you know, no sweat off my sack. In my defense, I haven't seen Contact in right around the time it came out. 97? Like 97. Maybe I, I was still in high school the last time I really watched that film. And 19 or 18, 19, 20-year-old Dan... Probably didn't like those Think of Man movies back then, so he might be more enjoy it now. <laughs> Anyways, my first list, um, Top Gun, Val Kilmer, Val Kilmer to Tombstone. Tombstone's got Michael Bean. Michael Bean's in The Rock, for, or from the, the Rock, Take Nicholas Cage, Lord of War with Bridget Moynihan, and I, Robot with Will Smith, who's in Independence Day. That's my first list. It's a good list. L- let's look at the the top the top films in the... Well, let's, the, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. Film this year. Um, you present your list, and then Tom and I will give it a rate or like a grade rating, and then okay. I'll present my list, and you guys will give my list a grade rating. Tom, Tom is a, is an F, or no? Tom is the D minus. I'm just saying yeah, that right since, now. Since we're already there, yeah. <laughs> he's rating yours too, Dan. <laughs> right, we we could do that as long as nobody's gonna get butt hurt. <laughs> I'm not gonna look. If you guys don't want to go with any one of my lists, I'm not gonna be upset. So, yeah, either. Like, that's you know. the thing is I came into this with the expectation. Like, I love my list. I think they're good. But if we don't go with them, no sweat off my sack. Yeah, I mean, a couple of them, we have the same movies. But we have like, to, uh, we, we honestly, we don't have to decide tonight. We just were presenting them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And honestly, you guys can be wrong and not like my list. You know, that can happen, but. Okay, Tom, whatever. <laughs> but no, right. I would, uh, like, if I had to give your, that list a grade, I would probably say B, B plus. 
mind the Val Kilmer list? Yeah. I'd have to say it's solid B. I Robot's not the best film. No, uh, it's not. It's not my favorite movie. I just uh, I was trying to get to Independence Day and Bridget yeah, Moynihan like, from Lord of War connects it. And it's like Tombstone and The Rock both fall into a similar category for me. Is I didn't watch those in their heyday. Like <laughs> I watched them after like I was an adult, and everybody's like, "Oh, I love those movies when they came out ten years ago." Like <laughs> I should watch those movies now. <laughs> so I watched them, and I didn't have the impact on me that they did for people who watched them when they were new. You know. So it's yeah. just like, eh, whatever. I mean, yeah, they're okay films. Okay, well, like I said, uh, no, it, that, I'm not going to get offended about it. No, I'm just telling you why I, I'm guess justifying why I'm giving it a B as opposed to like, because I know if you like those movies, because I know people who absolutely love Tombstone. Like, mm-hmm. I can see, watch that movie, and I can see why people enjoy it. I just, like I said, I missed the wagon on that one. What's mm-hmm. the term I'm looking for? Not the wagon. Is that the train? Miss the train? Yeah. yeah. I missed the train on that one. So it's just like, oh, yeah, it's not a bad movie. It's like watching a Game of Thrones after the fact. Yeah. Uh, it was awesome when it was playing, but if you watch it now, you're like, eh. I've always liked Tombstone. I think the actors in the movie turn out pretty good performances, um, oh, especially. Dude, Kyle Kilmer is amazing in that movie. I do yeah. remember that. Yeah, he's really good in it, and, and so is uh, Kurt Russell. Hell, even Michael Bean's character, you know, is, is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Plus, no, there's other good actors Bean in it. Bean or Bane? I've always pronounced it Bane. It's Bean. It's spelled like Bean, right? B E A N. No, it's B. It's B I H N. Yeah. B I H N. Something like that. Yeah. I always pronounce. I don't, it. I, I, it's, years ago, I watched. I I used to pronounce it Bean too, and then years ago, I watched a uh, review or an interview with him because he's in the the Aliens Colonial Marines video game, mm-hmm. and it was right around the time that video game was coming out. They were talking to Michael Bean, and and the interviewer introduced him as Michael Bean. And was sitting right next to him. So I imagine before the camera started rolling, he had to have told the interviewer, my name's pronounced Bean. So mm-hmm. that's why I always say Or he was now. just too humble to correct him. He's so used I to mean, calling him Bean, he doesn't even notice it anymore. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, I pronounced the X-Men villain Magneto until the uh, 90s animated show started calling him Magneto. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. So it's not Magneto. Okay. So my list to, to uh, refresh mm-hmm. was Top Gun to contact through Tom Skerritt. Contact to Maverick with through Jodie Foster, mm-hmm. Maverick to Space Cowboys through James Garner, and I'm gonna go with uh, is my list that I'm presenting to you here. Space Cowboys to Star Trek First Contact through James Cromwell, and First Contact to Independence Day through Brent Spiner, because I feel like Men in Black is just obviously there. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, you are changing your list at the last minute there. That's some shady work. I mean, It was there at the beginning. I said it was a 1.5, Mr. I'm going to turn in an incomplete assignment. I shouldn't be dogging on the guy giving me a rating. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. That's all right. Josh is an F. Um, no, I mean, Fuck that's you, a... <laughs> I'm going to give it a B minus. I mean, Space Cowboys just doesn't... I mean, that's not a... I've never really had an interest in seeing it when I saw commercials for it when it was Have you new. seen the movie, though? No. Old people that want to be astronauts. Clint Eastwood, it... Tommy Lee Jones, James Garner, and uh, Donald Sutherland. They're astro- or they were like test pilots from the 1950s who got missed by NASA, but they were- went on to get hired on to join NASA again as adults to work on a, a thing. So they basically go through the uh, astronaut training program as adults, and they get to um, with the younger crowd. It's it's an awesome film. It's male golden girls in space. It wasn't my thing. Uh, so sorry, it's B minus, maybe a C plus. Um, I've seen. I'll give it. I'll be. I'll B minus. I'm also. I've seen First Contact so many times. It's. I, I love it. Don't get me wrong, but it's not going to raise a grade at this point. So B minus, Dan. Dan's gone into a coma from your I th- list. I think we lost Dan. No, sorry, I have my microphone muted. Uh, I will give it a B. Like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of Contact. Um, it's not my favorite film. Um, it's, it's a good movie. Just I don't know. To me, it was kind of boring. Yeah. Uh, but anywho, yeah, I'll give it a B. I, I actually like Space Cowboys. I think it's a good little movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it always felt like one of those movies. Like it's, it, it always. Ca- it, let me rephrase. It felt like one of those movies when it came out that it wasn't like a big budget movie. It was just kind of like a low budget movie that just kind of came out. Like mm-hmm. it was like, yeah, let's just we'll make this one. We have a script for it. Might as well throw it out there. It's like nobody really was 
It wasn't a passion film for anybody. Yeah. But it was enjoyable. It, yeah, it's a good movie. I mean, I really think it is. It, it's just, um, again, not one of my favorite films. And First Contact, I have, I'm like Tom. I have seen it a thousand oh, yeah. times if I've Didn't seen it once. we just watch it just like a couple We just watched ago? it. One of the last things we did at your place before yeah. we went through shutdown. Mm-hmm. But um, I've seen it so many times that, um, I mean, I can write the script for the film line by line. Mm-hmm. Um, but I it really like it. It's one of the three Star Trek movies I consider to be excellent. Um, I could watch it over and over and over again. I like your list. I'll give it a B. All right. Well, back to you, Dan. What was your second list? My second list was... The second list was uh, Kelly McGillis. Uh, Top Gun, Kelly McGillis. And then go to Witness with Danny Glover to Lethal Weapon to Gary Busey in Under Siege with Tommy Lee Jones and Men in Black, Will Smith. Is that the right number of movies? Count that off again. So you go... He's got Witness, um, Lethal Weapon, Witness, Under Siege, Lethal Weapon, Under Siege, Men in Black, and ID4. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's he's got it. He's got he's got it. He's got he it. filled on all the bubbles. He, I'm giving this one an A minus. Um, would be higher, but Under Siege. Sorry. I've never seen Witness, and I, like, I've never seen. I don't even know what to comment on that. I've never seen it. Um, how do I describe it? It's um, Han Solo with the Amish. It's a crime drama kind of movie. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, someone goes into witness protection or something. I, can't, I haven't seen the movie in a while, so I'm probably missing some beats in the synopsis. But mm-hmm. uh, someone needs to go into witness protection, so they hide him in the, in uh, Amish country. And Harrison Ford goes with him to protect him or help protect him or something like that because Harrison Ford's the cop or something. So. Oh, I thought it was so, Harrison Ford who was in the witness protection, but yeah, either way, I don't. Harry, really, I haven't knows. seen the movie in a while. I I know it's a good movie. I just I really haven't seen it in a long time. So why didn't you know? It just dawns on me. Why didn't anybody use uh? God damn it! That movie with Harrison Ford and uh Tommy Lee Jones. The Fugitive. Thing. Yes, the Fugitive. Oh, God, I didn't uh, even think of that one. That's it why it just came to me. Shit. I was no, going I, to um. It was one of those when I I was looking at Witness and I was like, oh, I can go Harrison Ford to f- the Fugitive. To Tommy Lee Jones, and I'm like, oh wait, that would only have me like three or four movies and not six. So I needed movies to get me back to See, where I you need to be. Like, yeah. My my knee jerk reaction to that, that list is a B <laughs> because I've never seen Witness. Let's see, it goes. I don't I don't want to say a B minus. I'll give it a B, just because I don't want to feel like or make it off like I don't like Witness, so I'm not gonna give you a high grade. But I'll go with a B on that one. All right. Like I said, I'll be honest about that list. Uh, you know, I think Witness is a good film, a very good film. It's just it's one that we're gonna have to get through because it's just the rest of the movie on that list. Once you get past Witness, you get to, you go to Lethal Weapon, Under Siege, Men in Black, Independence Day. All of those are action movies that go bang, 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 and go from beat to beat to beat, and that's it. Whereas mm-hmm. Witness is a more of a character movie, you know, you know. Yeah, I might even be willing to give that higher if I didn't just watch Lethal Weapon 1. I just, like, watched that movie, like, two hours ago. Well, that's your fault, Josh. You yeah, shouldn't punish the rest of the group. Yeah. All right, guys who've seen First Contact a billion times. I, I've seen that movie a billion times. So what was your second list again, Josh? Uh, my second list. Top Gun to Tropic Thunder, using top, Tom Cruise. Tropic mm-hmm. Thunder to High Fidelity through Jack Black. High Fidelity to 1408. Through John Cusack, um, 1408 to Men in Black through using Tony Shalhoub, and Men in Black to Independence Day through Will Smith. This one's got a solid A for me. Going, it, it, It's inching into A+, plus just because you have back-to-back Cusack films. Um, I've seen High Fidelity so many times, so I could quote it. I, I, have I, I love it. this list because I haven't seen High Fidelity in forever, but I love that movie. And it's been so long since I've seen 1408, I really want to watch it again. I own both of those films. So again, this is a this is a win for me, no matter what. So it's an A, inching into an A plus, but not quite there. Like I think the low movie in this list for me is Tropic Thunder, but it's like I need that movie because I needed a, I needed an extra step. Like you could go from Top Gun to Independence Day in five. Yeah, that, and that and if Tropic Thunder is your low uh, movie, then you're doing something right. Nigel, what are your thoughts? Uh, I'm going to give this one a B plus. Um, I like almost all the movies in it, except uh, I like Tropic Thunder. It's just not my favorite film ever. I, I, it's a it's a movie that I enjoy when I watch it, but I'm not like. Yeah, it's like I said, I had I needed that movie to connect a, to an additional crossover with Jack Black. 
Yeah. I mean, you can get to Top Gun to high fidelity using Tim Robbins. Yeah. So, I mean, I like... Like I said, that's the low in the in that list for me. It's a damn good list. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I like that one. All right, Dan, back to you. All right, my last list was Meg Ryan. So take Meg Ryan from Top Gun and then go to Inner Space, which I feel is one of those best movie you never saw kind of movies. Uh, that was like my such favorite an, movie growing up. Such Thank an under, you, yes. It's such an underrated gem. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I, I have fond memories of that movie growing up because I think we just got a cable box or something and we had one of the movie channels like HBO or Cinemax or something for free for a couple of months. And they play one of that channel played inner space like all the time. So I watched that movie a ton. Dude. I love that. That was like one of the sci-fi movies of the day too. I mean, that was yeah. like 89 or some shit. Mm-hmm. Something like it's, that. It was yeah. one of those movies where the special effects were all real, like uh, practical effects. Yeah. And they didn't look fake. Like when he was going through the, the veins and he was right up next to the uh, red blood cells, it looked like he was right up next to the red blood yeah. cells. Yeah. Same yeah. with when he when, when when he needs to get the visual stuff, so he has to put that thing in the back of Rob Martin Short's eye. You know, it's like I always win at that scene every single time I watch it when he fires that little harpoon thing, puts it in the back of um, Martin Short's eye. The, the clamp thing, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I always like, wondered, like after that movie, it's like Mar- Martin Sheen still has all that shit in him. <laughs> No, I think they they mentioned that it was going to dissolve in a few days or something like that. Like everything that was in there was biodegradable or something to that effect. I want to say um, it was up on Netflix a while back, but sorry, I didn't mean to. Cut no, you no, off. no, it's I okay. I haven't seen it in a while. I honestly have not seen that movie in a while, and I just thought that would be a fun movie to watch. So when I when I started to do the list, I saw Inner Space. I'm like, ooh, that'd, that'd be a fun movie for this podcast. Also, it kind of fits the a back-to-back '80s kind of theme. You know, we got Top Gun, and then we go into Inner Space. It kind of fits with me. Uh, the third movie, uh, you know, take Dennis Quaid from Inner Space and then go into one of my favorite movies of all time, The Right Stuff. God, I love that movie. A great movie. A movie about the Mercury astronauts. It's a yeah. classic film. Well, it's, it's kind of a two-part film. The first part of the film is, in, is, is Chuck Yeager breaking the sound barrier. Mm. And then, then it segues into the space program, the, the beginnings of the space program and all that. Mm. But it still contains one of my favorite scenes in any movie ever, which is the beginning of the movie when they're watching Sputnik launch. And he says, are there Germans smarter? And you hear that guy in the thick German accent go, nine, are Germans as smart as the Germans? <laughs> Love it. That was Werner von Braun, and that's an actual quote. Well, it's still great. It's still a great scene. <laughs> It's still a great scene when he says nine. Ah, uh, Gemmins are smart as Zed Gemmins. Yeah, I love about that movie is the scene that uh, when John Glenn's wife doesn't want to see the uh, vice president, Lyndon Johnson, at the time. Mm-hmm. The flight guys at NASA was threatening to kick him off of uh, the flight. Being like, if she doesn't do it, you're not going to get this flight. And then all the other uh, astronauts just came up and be like, well, you kick him off that flight. You're going to kick all of us off these flights. It's like, no nonsense. They had his back. No yeah. question to ask. And like that scene right there is uh, one of my favorite astronaut biographies, Mike Massimino. His uh, that's like one of his de facto scenes that he goes to, and like that's what he wanted. Like that's why he wanted to be an astronaut because he wanted that sense of community. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, so, so you got uh, interface it, to. It, Right stuff. Right stuff. And then, honestly, it fits the theme again. We're going back-to-back weeks here. So, Inner Space fits this theme of, like, a back-to-back 80s kind of two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then we got – then we go into the right stuff, which is not an 80s movie because the – well, a movie made in the 80s, but it takes place in the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. But – um. Or no, it just takes place in the 60s because it's just the Mercury program. They don't go into the Apollo program at all. But speaking of the Apollo program, the right stuff does go into Apollo 13 because Ed Harris plays the aforementioned John Glenn in uh, the right stuff. So uh, Ed Harris is in Apollo 13, one of my... Gene Krantz, the Gene Krantz, one of my absolute favorite fucking movies of all time. I love Apollo 13. I, it's a movie I've seen a thousand times, and it's based on a true story. So you know all the astronauts lived and they survived, but still that that 60 seconds in real time of radio silence when they're waiting for them. Oh to my get, god! To touch down, you're still on the edge of your seat going, "What? What?" And then when you when you finally hear Lovell go, you know, "This is Apollo 13," you know, <laughs> you're like, "Oh my god, yay!" <laughs> so. Love that movie. Love that movie. It's yeah. such a good movie. We can, we can, and if we do choose this list, we can dive deeper into it when we get to the movie. But I love the uh, story of the movie where they actually had to add infighting and drama because if you actually just listen to the radio tapes from the Apollo 13 crew, they're professional the entire time. Not one yeah. time do they bicker. Not one time do they ask. You know, they're just they're totally professional the entire time. Mm-hmm. So also fun fact about that movie, and I recently learned this bit of trivia. 
the guy who plays Tom Hanks, uh, Jim Lovell's son, uh, who was in military school, is also the actor who played Colt in Three Ninjas. Interesting. <laughs> Step up. <laughs> I mean, well, no, he retired from acting like shortly after that. Like all three of the original Three Ninjas actors, yeah, no longer are acting. Well, I mean, you're once you've done Three Ninjas, that's yeah, where do you go your, from yeah. there? Yeah, right? your career's kind of peaked at that point. You touch the sun, man. There's nothing else. So, so we go from Apollo 13 to Big. Because Apollo 13 obviously obviously has Tom Hanks in it. So we go to Big, who which has Robert Loja, and Robert uh, Loja is in Independence Day. Robert My only Loja. issue with that last movie is the fact that you've been slowly incrementing years in your movies and releases. It's like Top Gun was 86, um, Inner Space, wasn't that like 89? Yeah, 88, 89. No, because then uh, Right Stuff is 84, Apollo 13 was 95, now we're back to like 84. Yeah, it kind of goes back and forth. Where's the incremental? But no, no, Dan, that is a fantastic list. And honestly, mm-hmm. I have to give that one an A. I, I got to give that one an A. That, that's a fantastic list. A plus for me, too. Uh, yeah. I'm calling this the space route because. Yeah, well, you know what? I, 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 yeah, I would be happy. It is mostly like, I mean, I know that inner space isn't a space movie, but Dennis Quaid is basically an astronaut in character only. Um, yeah, yeah, you think about it. I mean, because you go from the movie about the pilots, test pilots effectively. Well, they're not test pilots. They're just they're pilots, but just high-end pilots mm-hmm. to inner space, which is effectively an astronaut in your guts, to test pilots becoming astronauts, to astronauts who then to become a toy kid, maker. Yeah, to kids be, who become adults, and then Robert Loja. So yeah, I, think- I just big is a kind of a you know I know big's a little bit big is the, big is the movie in that list that one of these things is not like the other. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Like, oh, honestly, yeah. I would be content, 100% content going with that list. Even with the, the asterisk that we could pos- if we could find something better for big, that would be okay. And everything else remained the same. Well, I can, you know, we've got six weeks. If we can get to Apollo 13, I can go through the actors and actresses in Apollo 13 and see if I can find another connection to mm-hmm. Independence Day. It should be that. As long as I don't know how many we got. Use- we got uh, Ron Howard's brother. Yeah. Um, who's been in everything. Um, we've got um, Bill Paxton. Uh, uh, Lee Schreiber, or right? Schreiber. Yeah, yeah. Lee Schreiber's in it. Bill Paxton, um, uh, Gary Sinise. Are we uh, missing the big one? Kevin Bacon. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that does get a six degrees to Kevin Bacon right there. It's funny because like I was thinking, like Jack Swigert. No, that's the name of the guy. It is Jet Kevin Bacon, right, Josh? It is Kevin Bacon. <laughs> right. Yes, we get to Kevin Bacon and that. But yeah, Gary Sinise. Okay. Ransom. Uh, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, Gary Sinise isn't Ransom, isn't he? Yeah, I just watched that movie today, too. I've never seen Ransom. It's it's a good film. It's one of those movies that's got, uh, you know how it's going to end, but you like how it gets there. It's not a bad way to do it. But no, honestly, yeah, A plus for this list from me. A from Josh. But now to the real winner of this night, which is the Tom list, which is uh, Tom Cruise in Color of Money, which gives us Paul Newman to Hudsucker Proxy. Color of Money, I, I mentioned before last week, is the sequel to The Hustler. Paul Newman is a book. He's a pool hustler in that film. And in this one, he kind of comes out of retirement to train Tom Cruise in the art of pool hustling. You know, I, I think it starts off mostly Tom Cruise in the beginning, but then Paul Newman takes over and kind of becomes a Paul Newman story once uh, Tom Cruise makes a face heel turn. Classic film, early Tom Cruise. And from the silence, I'm assuming neither of you have seen that no, one. No, I've seen it. I've seen it. Ah. I have not. It's a pre-Top Gun Tom Cruise movie. It's a slower film. I don't think it... I think it did yeah, I think the okay. only thing I know about that one is the fact that in one of their live shows, Blink-182 commented that that's the movie where Tom Cruise is a retard and shits all over himself. I'm quoting. I'm quoting. <laughs> so There's that's, no that's shitting my only go- experience on that movie. I uh, might even have the movie wrong. You probably <laughs> have the movie wrong. But uh, next one, Hudsucker Wait, Proxy. Wait, no, that was born on the 4th of July. That's definitely the one. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. But Hudsucker Proxy, that's... um. Uh, Coen Brothers, early Coen Brothers film about essentially the making of the hula hoop, um, starring Tim Robbins. Uh, not one of their more known films, not one of their more successful films. In fact, it almost killed their Hollywood careers. It's it's a good it's a good film. It's just not a classically good film. Um, but from there, Tim Rob again amending 
my list, Tim Robbins then takes us into High Fidelity, which, come on, it's High Fidelity. It's a, it's a Cusack classic. It's one of those quotable, quotable films. And then from High Fidelity, you'll have Jack Black, which takes you to Enemy of the State which has Will Smith and uh, Gene Hackman and also has Seth Green. It has a few other people. Is is Sean Bean in that one or is that one Which of the movie other people? Enemy of the State. It's where um, a Dude, spy... I haven't seen that movie since it came out. I have no idea. Uh, it's essentially um, super spy... I know. I know. I remember the pretense but... of the movie. Yeah, I remember that movie. I remember enjoying it, but it was one of those movies that's just like very mm-hmm. generic for its day. It was. It's one of those films you look at. It's like, yeah, that's a, that's a late 90s, early 2000s. But it's got a young Jack Black in it. I mean, he play, him and Seth Green play the interns who think it's all a training mission and they're like tracking um, Will Smith's character down. So, And then, yeah, from um, Jack Black, uh, or we get Will Smith, who takes us to ID4. Yeah. That's it's, a, it's a pretty list. solid list. I give it a C minus. B minus. All right, yeah, I'll, I, find, the, I'll give it. A, I'll give first... it a B. I'll give it a B. Jesus yeah. Christ! I'm, I'm gonna have to give it a, a C because those. Yeah, I fell asleep during the first half. I might have to relook at some of these grades I gave some of everyone else's lists here. Holy okay, cow! We're not, we're not doing that. Okay, we're not. We're not gonna. We're not doing that. We we all know which risks we're going with here. It's it's the space route. That's, yeah, uh, I'd have to say that that that's probably the safe bet is the space route. Yeah. As soon as Dan said right stuff, I was like, yep, this is the one. <laughs> well, I like I said, I just think that's such a good movie. It's I don't know. It's just, it's not an action film. You know, no. it might it, it's not as a. Uh, you know, you I, totally bypassed my third list. Just saying. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, the your um Tom Cruise list with uh yeah. No, no. my Val Kilmer, Red Planet, Red Planet to Memento and or Matrix to Bad Boys to Independence Day. F. It's hard yeah, F. It's like F. It's like hard F. Because, and this is for our listeners, Tom hates uh. God damn it! <laughs> director of Memento. Chris Nolan. Chris Nolan, thank you. I was like, I love right? Chris Nolan. Where are you getting that from? Double F now. You, you hate Double F for lying. No. Tom Tom why did you get my, my my list in F if you if you love Chris Nolan? Memento is probably one of his best movies. You know, all your other lists get Fs now, too. Speaking back to the teacher here. Oh. Bitter much? <laughs> Tom, I promise at some point in time in this podcast, we will get to the Hudsucker proxy. Okay, I know you were talking about last week. You really wanted to watch that movie with all of us. No, no, that was I The promise Hustler. You no, the hustler is what I wanted to watch with you guys, oh, okay. and also uh, Color of Money. We might no. have to do that if we do sequels and stuff. Yeah, well, we'll you know, get we, to it. Keep in mind, we could still do movies like our short branches, like we did with RoboCop last week. Oh yeah, yeah we could. Yeah, we could. Well, yeah, go ahead. Uh, opportunities present, and they probably will. We can always cy- circle back, but no, this I am not at all complaining about the next couple of weeks, guys. This okay. is going to yep. be. I think if we had to vote, I would have to go with Dan's space list. Okay, so if we're going to go with the space list, which Mm -hmm. I made this list, so of course I'm all on board for it. But if we're going to go with the space list, I will try to get a movie between Apollo 13 and Independence Day that's not big. But I can't promise all of anything. Well, we can all look at it, and big's not a bad one. I just Big's a good movie. It doesn't, but it is... It does like looking on the list now. It goes, eh, one of these things is not like the other. Yeah, you know, it's a classic one though. I mean, you're throwing in a good. I mean, also, I, I haven't seen Big since in the VHS days. So I, I kind of want to see it as an adult because I know some of those jokes. I thought I didn't did not get as a kid. I'd get now. So mm-hmm. for me, that's uh, that's the fun of watching '80s movies as an adult. Like I watch all these movies with my kids and I get the adult jokes and I know they don't. I'm like, I wonder if they like, I, I wonder what's going through their mind while these jokes are being made. Cause I remember watching shows like back to the future that had a couple of adult jokes here and there and not getting yeah. them until I got older. I'm like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. this movie is so much more funny than I thought it was. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I remember when Claire was going through a phase, uh, she was watching all the uh, old WB animated shows on Hulu. So mm-hmm. she was watching like pink in the brain and animaniacs and, Tiny Toon Adventures and all that. And there's a lot of adult humor peppered into those shows that oh I did God. not get as a kid. That I did not get as a kid. I think one of the uh, my favorite what favorite adult jokes in a kid's movie. Now, the movie's not good, mind you. It's The Cat in the Hat with Mike Myers. Like, he's walking through a garden, and then he steps on, a like, a, a hoe. 
it hits him in the face. He goes and he picks up. It's like, well, now that's a dirty hoe. And he throws it away. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, he has this one new car that he like creates out of a box. And mm-hmm. I forget what he called it. It was like a super hyperactive inverted transport. And he kind of just deadpans to the camera. And then they go on about the show. <laughs> you know, it's any wonder that film didn't catch on with audiences. <laughs> yeah. But I love, it's one of those jokes where it's just like, did they just do that? <laughs> yeah. Apparently he, uh, Mike Myers was more or less forced to, to do that movie. Some kind of contractual obligation or something yeah. like that. I think it was after that film, the, um, the widow of uh, Dr. Seuss said, nope, Hollywood, yeah, you done. Yeah. yeah, she did. No She's more live me. action remakes of uh, his properties. And yeah. then it wasn't until Horton Hears a Who, because they went and showed her, they like basically made like the first 20 minutes of that movie. The Illumination did. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, okay, you guys can make my movies, but do not make them bad. And so far, I mean, they've made three for Dr. Seuss IPs. I guess. Uh, they had uh, Lorax, Horton Hears a Who, Grinch. Am I missing one? Did they make another Grinch? They did, with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. I missed that one completely. Why would, they remake, why would they remake Grinch? It was done right the first time. Oh, and I hated the little Jim Carrey. Yeah, I'm talking about the animated one, of course. Why? Yes. Why they? That wasn't they even a good book to begin with. Like I remember reading that and be like, "This is just." Cre-. I've never liked the Grinch, mind you. I, I've always thought he was creepy. Well, that was kind of the point of him. So you're yeah. the one audience member that I got remember, it. I remember. I remember. I went to a. I actually, I went on a date with a girl in high school. I mean, it was amazing. And uh, we <laughs> walked in there, and they were. It was like Decemberish, and the Grinch was in theaters. Yeah. And uh, she knew I didn't like the Grinch. I found him creepy, and I was just, like, weirded out by him. Mm-hmm. So she's like, ooh, look, there's the Grinch. And she pointed at the doll hanging from the ceiling. I'm like, yep. And you notice he's hanging by his neck. She's like, <laughs> you're impossible. <laughs> Damn, is it bad? I don't even remember her name. Fuck, yes. Her yes. Name. But it's okay. We're only judging you quietly and out loud. Well, right, she so was, let's... like, my only girlfriend in high school. I don't even remember her name. Wow. <laughs> I haven't thought about her in years. <laughs> So if you're listening to this, uh, feel free to email us and let us know what your name is, Josh's high school girlfriend. I, I'm pretty sure I didn't uh, leave that much of an impact. She broke up with me by giving me a note as I walked her to class one day, and then she went into her class, like, keep in mind, like 20 minutes before class actually started. Yeah. And it was a note that she was breaking up with me. And I'm just like, okay, well. God. <laughs> All right, so basically, let's go with the uh, uh, circling back. It sounds like that Tom or Dan won the day. Tom did not. <laughs> <laughs> Which, all honesty, uh, Dan, I-, I tip my hat to you. That was a fantastic mm-hmm. list. Yeah, King Thank C- you. I, I honestly didn't expect to win. I mean, I really, I, I liked the list that I came together, but I'm like, uh, they're good. they're going to come up with better lists. Than those I am honestly people. surprised that Contact is not well received by you guys. I love Contact. No, I'm the one that's. Like, yeah, contact and space cow. I thought that list was a killer. I space again. Space cowboy just doesn't uh, wet my whistle. And you had it pretty close with the Tropic Thunder list, though. I'm not gonna lie, but if it wasn't for right stuff, I think that one might have won the list mm-hmm. one today. Yeah, I, I like that uh, my Tropic Thunder list. I did like that one, but I, I gotta yeah. give it to Dan on that uh, right stuff list. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. that's granted. The night we watch right stuff, it's gonna be the only movie we watch. <laughs> yeah, because it's like it's almost three hours long. Yeah, we we got to start of starting a movie. Dan, yeah. um I I feel like we're cutting this segment short, but it is almost midnight and we haven't even started the movie. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, I guess we are only watching one tonight. What do you want me to do? Give me the give everyone yeah, the rundown Dan, on Top Gun. Yeah. Do the rundown. All right. Well, I'll make it short and sweet. Top Gun is the movie we are watching tonight as mentioned multiple times before. Top Gun was released in 1986, directed by Tony Scott. This was a movie that, uh, no pun intended, this is the movie that launched Tom Cruise into the stratosphere. Um, this is the movie where he's, they made, this movie made him the, the, the movie star that he is still today. Um, he had made quite a few movies before Top Gun, but Top Gun was huge. And it cemented Tom Cruise as a huge box office draw. And so, it spiked Navy recruitment for like a year. Dude, it did so much more than just spike Navy recruitment. It well, it's like Navy recruitment, things like uh, those those Ray-Ban aviator sunglasses that they wear. The Ray-Ban ran out of stock because they were so popular. <laughs> those Dude, sunglasses. Yeah, this movie literally defined a generation. Mm-hmm. 18, 19 year olds in 1986. This movie was their movie. Like I grew I was only three years old when this movie came out. 
And it's mm-hmm. like, I love this movie. I, you know, it was that big for me even after I, uh, that it came out, but like talking to people who were, you know, it, around the age of 20 at this time, this movie was everything to them in the same way. Like, I don't know. What movie would you think to find our generation? Like late nineties when we were around 20 years old. Uh, Ooh. well, I wasn't, we, we, I wasn't in my twenties until the year 2000. Yeah, until, well, like, I mean, I was, 2002 was 2003 when I was, was when I turned 20. So it's like, like what, what movie do you think would define that peer? Huh. That's there's, a- there's a couple, um, you know, uh, like, honestly, I would even say Independence Day could be a potential one. Yeah, I mean, Independence that was Day was huge. Independence 96. Day was a huge movie, and Independence Day was '90s though. That yeah. was. I'm just saying that that would that could that could be considered a generation defining movie too, mm-hmm. or like Jurassic Park could even to a degree. Yeah. I mean, that was what '94. Yeah, but Shit. we're talking cultural impacts. You mm-hmm. know, like not everyone was walking around pretending they were a Velociraptor after Jurassic Park. Yeah, but everybody wanted to be a paleontologist. This movie is still, still, get, to get back on track, this movie is still very firmly mm-hmm. cemented in the zeitgeist and the pop culture. Um, people still wonder, uh, people still ask if the Navy flies F-14s. The, the Navy hasn't flown F-14s since like 1990 Yeah, Yeah, they started to phase them out in the late 90s, and they were completely phased out by 2004. So the Navy hasn't flown them, and they haven't flown them in combat since the 90s. But people still want, oh, God, you know, the F-14 is the best uh, fighter craft ever. It it still goes down in history as one of the best, but the, mm-hmm. Navy, the Navy doesn't use it anymore. Um, but everyone thinks of that plane because they think of Top Gun. The soundtrack, the, believe it or not, this movie is an Academy Award-winning film. This movie won Best Original Song at the 1986 or 87 Academy Award. Wait a minute, Award. wait a minute. Are you telling me? It's an Academy Award winning winning film yes. like Suicide Squad. Yes. Yes. Although unlike Suicide Squad, it's watchable. But <laughs> <laughs> and quotable. I, and quotable. I can't think of one line from Suicide Squad, but I can I can rattle off five quotes from Top Gun. Hey, um, come on, there's one quote from Suicide Squad. We're like some kind of Suicide Squad. Oh god. Uh, I'm hurt. Have we really gone <laughs> that far down? Hey, hey oh. why don't we find a way to connect that to Independence Day? Will Smith, come on, guys. Yeah, right. I'm not going to be there for that episode. Guys. This also inspired um, a uh, theme park ride at Kings Island. It did. Uh, was uh, it yeah. It's still, it's still to this day. I don't think it's still called Top Gun, but no, the ride Paramount is still. Sold it. Yeah, but yeah. it's still to this. It's uh, yeah, and I don't think the ride is called Top Gun anymore. The uh, ride is still there. It's still one of the more popular rides at Kings Island. And I still remember when that ride first came out and you could stand in line and it would play the theme from Top Gun and, and a couple of the songs off the soundtrack multiple times. Mm-hmm. Danger Zone. Yeah. yeah. Archer, but, come on. Yeah, plus at Paramount, Kings Island, and, and at other Paramount theme parks, um, replicas were made of the F-14 Tomcat in uh, some of the um, movie lot areas of the theme parks. Uh, so, like I said, this movie's still very much in the pop culture to this day. And I, I was just looking up the numbers on it, mm-hmm. and it was actually it was. Oh, where was? Uh, where's my note? Where's my note? I got it because this was this was a, an amazing statistic for this. Oh, okay. The, when this movie came out, it was the highest grossing film of 1986. It would be six months before its theater count dropped below that of its opening week. Six months. Holy yeah. shit! Dude, yeah, the this... box office was a very different place back in the eighties. Uh, yeah, and, and Ghostbusters people... was number one for what, like eight weeks? Yeah, but yeah, this movie was out six months before its theater count dropped below that of its opening weekend. So, yeah, it sold a shit ton of tickets. A lot of people went to go see this movie, and a lot of people went to go see this movie multiple times. Yeah, yeah. Of course, back then you could actually afford to do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, also back then they didn't stagger releases like they do now which kind of um limits the movie's potential to do that today if a movie stays number one in the box office i would say for three or four weeks at a time it's that's pretty impressive mm-hmm. oh yeah like um, back when avatar came out like that was when we were like waist deep in the, doing our box office drum roll mm-hmm. like it like by all consideration week two of avatar fucking sherlock holmes with uh, robert downey jr should have beaten it and Robert Downey or that movie made the same gross that it should have made, but for some strange reason, Avatar made like was it more money than its opening weekend, which was unheard of. It's even unheard of today. Yeah. So back then in the '80s, that wasn't unheard of. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So, so even in '93, Mrs. Doubtfire was at number one for like a month. Mrs. Freaking Doubtfire. I'd have to double check that. You'll have to uh, double check that numbers, but I'm pretty confident. Like that's only like six or yeah, six years or seven years after this film. Right. That being all said, this is I, I'm going to be biased here. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was doing the research for this to do the rundown, and I was actually genuinely shocked that it actually only has a 54% critic rating on Rotten Tomatoes. However, it has an 83% audience score. So the reason why the critic rating surprised me is because I've honestly never met anyone in person that doesn't like this movie. I've met people I, who I, are I'd indifferent to it. Thumbs up. Yeah, I've met yeah. people who are indifferent to the movie. I've met people who are like, it's a good movie, but it's not one of my favorites. But I've never met anyone who outright hates the movie. You know, I've met people who hate lots of different movies, but I've never met anyone that outright hates this movie. Even people who don't, even people who hate Tom Cruise don't hate this movie. Tom Cruise is also one of those actors you can't uh, say is a bad actor. You may not yeah. like him as a person, but you can't say he's a bad actor. Very few Tom Cruise movies I don't actually enjoy. And it's but, not generally Tom Cruise's fault. It's, no, no. There's very few Tom Cruise movies that I don't like. But going back to this movie, I think this movie's got some potential for us here. I think we can use this movie to come back to. Not rewatch it every time, but the branching path from this movie can feed this podcast for months. Because yes. of how many different actors and actresses are in this movie that have gone on to have great careers in Hollywood. This is a movie that we could use as a, well, another pun here for, for aircraft, a launching pad. Now, what's yeah. the film about? I mean, we, we we have, for the past couple of these, we've said, you know, the the background, like the cost. But what, what's the premise behind the film? What's For those people that have never seen the film. Okay, uh, for, the, for the five people in America that haven't seen Top Gun yet. And our uh, six bot followers. <laughs> our six bot followers who may haven't seen it. The movie is about... Uh, well, Tom Cruise's character plays uh, Maverick. Pete Mitchell is his real name. And his uh, radar officer, Goose. Um, who I think's first name is Nick, played by uh, Anthony Edwards. They're F-14 fighter pilots in the Navy. At the beginning of the movie, they uh, scare off a couple of MiGs, and they help another pilot who freaks out land on the aircraft carrier. And when they do that, the pilot that freaks out leaves, and the captain or or admiral that's in charge of their aircraft carrier sends uh, Maverick and Goose to Top Gun, which is a school for... Naval Navy pilots to get make the better make them make the best even better and it's a competition school so Maverick competes with other pilots like Iceman who's played by Val Kilmer to win Top Gun and in the course of the movie hilarity ensues uh, a lot of machismo and so ho, so many homoerotic undertones um mm. <laughs> the boys are out to play uh honestly this is a movie for everybody so um and then in the court and maverick i think has a little bit of a backstory you know in the movie his dad was a pilot in the in the vietnam war and he uh was shot down and killed mm-hmm. at one point in time so maverick kind of has to live with that stigma and that's why he gets the name maverick because he, he doesn't need to defy rules and regulations and all this other stuff so and let's never forget that it also inspired the uh, parody film Hot shots. Oh, yes, it did. Right. The Charlie Sheen movie. I only think of that because it's like he says, I have his eyes. And then he opens the thing and it's literally his dad's eyes. Oh, right. Oh, God, I love that film so much. God, thank you for reminding me of that, Josh. So, but guys, uh, we are almost two hours. Into yeah, we need to get in. We need to get started on this movie. So anyways, that's Boys, the synopsis. We're never going to go to sleep tonight. Yeah, sleep is for right. suckers anyways. So All right. Let's, let's get this show started. <laughs> to another episode of The Fire Pit. I'm your editor, interspersal host, and air traffic controller, Tom. And you have clearance to launch into 80s cliches. Yeah! Okay, this is the first film on a road to Independence Day. Uh, Something excited we've been talking about doing for a bit, and looking forward to seeing if we make it. This is also uh, already a long one, so I'll try to keep this commercial break short. Sponsors, we don't have any. News, we don't have any. Emails, We're working on it. Hopefully we'll have something in place for the next episode. And on that, I'll let you get back to it. Uh, Thanks for joining as always. And if anything else, good luck. Uh, All right, guys. Well, it is 1.55 in the a.m. 
Yeah, it is. Oh, well, you know what? Let's not wait for the end credits to go. Let's just go ahead and give our final thoughts. Josh, why don't you go ahead and give yours? I love this movie. It's just like, you know, one thing I did notice this time over uh, previous viewings is how seamless, like unnoticed, but obvious transition in the soundtrack are. Like the very mm-hmm. beginning, you know, you start with the Top Gun theme and then immediately it swaps over to the Danger Zone. Yeah. Well, this was um, this was a film that was made during uh, peak MTV generation time frame. So uh, most films really were very inspired by music videos and very cognizant of that. So that well, does that's also me at all. because I don't know. I didn't check this director's credits, but that's also because back then a lot of music video directors mm-hmm. were getting hired on to do. Mo- um, movies because a lot of music videos did give some directors a chance to be directors where those chances hadn't been before. God, it's hard to believe that at one point a good music video made or broke an artist. Right. And like nowadays a music yeah, video it, is just like an afterthought. Like, yeah, just film them playing their but, thing and interspliced random shit. Or anymore. It's like a, um, an excuse for product placement. It's like yeah. this video only got made because it's really an iPhone commercial starring Lady Gaga. Yeah, I love the like the soundtrack is always timeless in this movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, it reeks '80s, but it's like one of those '80s things that just like doesn't stink of '80s, if you know what I mean. Of course, I still argue that the '80s is the best generation of music. Just saying. Uh, you're agreeing. Um, you're agreeing. I know you are, Tom. It's okay. But uh... <laughs> okay, so but you're digging the transition. You like the music that goes say, along. That's my takeaway from this viewing. Hmm. And say for me, it's noticing prototype Tom Cruise. Just yeah. uh, seeing, well, the fact that he, he's aged five years since the 80s. He looks younger than the romantic interest he played against, who now looks like she could play his grandma. And he looks like he could play her younger nephew or <laughs> son. Yeah, yeah. True, true, true to fat form, the uh, sequel is actually going to be taking place in... Uh, Five you know years honestly, later. I bet you it takes place in, like, early double aughts. Think about it. Because his son is, it was, what, three, maybe four? Mm-hmm. So 14 years later, it would be 18. So 86. So 2000, he'd be 18. Tom Cruise here was, like, mid-20s. Uh, yep. So hypothetically, like, the kid would be in his... 30s if it took place true in 2020 mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's possible i mean i'm curious to see about that but we'll talk about the potential sequel in a bit i'm sure here but focus on this my takeaway is it's odd how slow this film is compared to modern films and, and this was considered a fast film this is it's, considered a fast-paced film, a boom, 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 hit you, hit you, hit you film. And yet, compared to modern action films, not even close. And honestly, even, even think close. about it. There is no, like, Iceman is kind of an antagonist in this film, but there really isn't an antagonist. No, yeah. there's, not a, there's not a really a villain in this movie, no, for sure. No, and like, even thinking about the plot, it's a very loose plot. Mm-hmm. He goes to school. It's like, it almost feels like the thing at the very end was tagged on to give you some kind of resolution. It's yeah. like, well, the ending of the movie can't be graduation. What is this, an officer and a gentleman? I was thinking the same thing, actually. It kind of has that whole, what What are the stakes of this? What happens yeah. if he fails the school? Well, he's still in I mean, He barely the passed. Navy. I mean, he showed up enough points to graduate. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So it's like, it's, it feels like they, they kind of shoehorned that ending in there to give you some level of closure for the film. Yeah. Iceman's not a Malfoy. He's not evil in fact he's he's actually a really good pilot and a rational yeah yeah, he's the he's the best pilot of the school Mm -hmm. arguably hands down maverick is the maverick Mm -hmm. like literally like everybody doesn't like he flies the way he flies i mean he's good pilot but everybody acknowledges he's not like a great pilot yeah that he's still uh unhinged you know and random and reckless whereas iceman is cool and calculated like if you notice in the movie Iceman wins every encounter they do it. And he, they don't win it like during that first encounter with Jester. Tom Cruise and Goose won that, air quotes, won that encounter. But they won that encounter when they went below 10,000 10, feet engagement. So they broke the hard deck. Yeah, yeah they, they had broke a the hard deck. 
Whereas every other encounter, Iceman won. He was the definitive best pilot at Top Gun that for that class. Mm -hmm. Tom Cruise was just the one who had the most drama. <laughs> yeah. But it, Maverick had nothing to prove. It's not like he had a, a specter above him. I mean, he had his dad drama, but that was never a thing. No one ever was like, hey, did you hear about his dad? Yeah. I mean, uh, literally, that's this movie... his dad? Yeah, no. The only ones what? that really knew about his dad, the only ones that mention his dad are Tom Cruise's Maverick himself, Tom Skerritt's character, and the captain on the um, aircraft carrier at the beginning of the movie. Those are the only characters that, that really mention. And it's not like Iceman doesn't know about it. Iceman doesn't say, oh, you're reckless just like your father was. Like, why? how would Iceman know that? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. it, there's no reason for The only people that mention his dad are the older Navy vets, the Admiral on the, the beginning, and then Tom Skerritt's character. So. And Hold it like as like a, a thing of disdain on him. The stakes were always personal on this one. I just realized yeah. that it was always for Maverick. It was never yeah. like I have to do this or, you know, we could go to war with the Russians or or I'll get kicked out yeah, of the air like the, or the, the only he was the protagonist and the antagonist. The only person he was trying to beat was himself. Mm hmm. Yeah, and it's like it's like you look at if you boil this plot down, all this is is flashy music and a very paper thin plot. Had it been made like ten years sooner, it, I mean, the plot still would have been the same. It just would have had like, a, well, if it would have been made ten years sooner, they could have cut it at the graduation, and the big victory would have been him showing up. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. Yeah, that the whole like denouement of him saving. Iceman and proving that he is the he is the top gun because real world he's got actual skills. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, and I'm just thinking about this. If we, they tried to like remake this, not just like they were doing the sequel, like that whole we're talking, Iceman would have been the son of the pilot that Maverick's dad. My dad died in Nam because of you and all that. Yeah, shit. they would definitely add some unnecessary angst if this movie was made today, mm -hmm. which does kind of make me worry about the sequel. As if Goose's son, who's going to be in the movie, is is Goose's son? Is the angst in the movie going to be Goose blame or his son blames Maverick for his father's death, even though it's clear in the movie that he's not responsible for Goose's death? All the other surrounding characters, including Goose's wife. Don't blame Maverick for Goose's death. In fact, mm -hmm. Goose's wife even comforts you Maverick. You were just too young to remember. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just hoping the uh, the angst isn't he blames Tom. Now I can I, I'll be okay if the angst in the movie is somewhat Tom Cruise's character still somewhat blames himself for his father's death because that's human that's human behavior mm -hmm. and he'll he'll go the rest. That's actually that that's actually true. He would go. He really would go the rest of his life wondering what could I have done differently and goose could still be alive. Oh, That's yeah. human nature. I, Katie and I years ago got in a car accident. Katie broke her hip. And even though the accident clearly wasn't my fault, I did nothing wrong. I still, to this day wonder, could I have done something different to prevent all that? So that's, that's human mm -hmm. nature. I'm okay with that. I'll be okay. If that's the angst, I just don't want the kid to be all like, Oh, you killed my father. You know, that's so lazy bullshit hollywood crap <laughs> yeah and i'm already worried about this movie because they've already are started editing it for china yeah well, yeah we could talk for hours about yeah well, we they could, took we off could be up till 5 a.m discussing why movies are made for china now yeah. i mean they took off one of the patches on his freaking jacket yeah. for that so you know that's that's the nature of the beast anymore maybe one day we'll make a podcast on global politics and how it affects hollywood maybe possibly one day but for now but that, that's what i picked up from this film like or this iteration just how personal the stakes were yeah uh, and how much you still felt invested you didn't the, what the fate of the world wasn't in, in, in on the line but you still felt like the fate of the world you know, was on the line my my uh my final thoughts are this movie gets a lot of um Die Hard type comparisons, like you know how every movie is. Whenever a movie comes out, it's like, oh, it's Die Hard on a train, or it's Die Hard on a boat, or it's <laughs> Die Hard. You know, it's Die Hard. It's Die Hard for a new generation, or something like that. Th this movie, th this happens to a lot of other movies too. Like you know, like uh, it's Top Gun for racing, or it's Top Gun for. That was know, literally the tagline for uh, Days of Thunder. 
yeah which also stars tom cruise yeah but um <laughs> top it, gun like, with racing cars yeah it's top gun for this it's top gun for a new generation or or it's whatever and then but then you realize like just like all these movies that keep getting compared to die hard none of them ever are anywhere near as good as die hard the movies that keep getting compared to top gun aren't near as good as top gun because while this movie is quote unquote a dumb action flick, there's a lot going on in the movie, and it doesn't treat its audience like it's an idiot. Like they're yeah, idiots. it doesn't. It doesn't. It like doesn't. I said, like it's, it, like it's my, got a paper thin plot, but it doesn't. It respects the audience. Yeah, it doesn't. It, it has a paper thin plot, but it's not a paint by numbers plot, and it's not a. It, 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 it's definitely not like a Michael Bay type plot where it holds your hand throughout the whole movie and says here, 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 go here, yeah, here, here. Yeah, because I mean, here. you actually have to think about it and be like, oh, like. Nobody came up to Tom Cruise like, you're only at war with yourself. Right. Oh, my God. That's totally what would happen if they tried to make this nowadays. Like, why are you so like your dad? Oh, yeah. that's what got him killed. And yeah. his like, Iceman would come up to him. It's like, the only person you're at war with is yourself. Yeah, they'd make some corny, crappy, stupid line like that. Just, it's to, just, just to tell the just, – just to tell the, Yeah, and like I said, the, the movie – reality. It's like you said, Josh. <laughs> Star Trek reference. I dig yeah. what you did there. <laughs> but go ahead, Nigel. <laughs> I was just saying that this movie, um, like Josh says, the, the movie has a basic plot, but the it doesn't insult you with its basic plot. I, at, n at no point in time in this movie does it feel like, oh, this is just a dumb popcorn flick that people are just going to go see and, and mm -hmm. escape for a couple of hours and then that's it. And they're not going to think about it. It's like it's like uh, Starship Troopers well, last week. But I, 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 I wouldn't you're, you're cutting out. To keep there. absorbing the message. Yeah, you keep cutting in sorry. and out, Nigel. Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, so your, saying, your like, message was so was too deep for the internet connection right here. <laughs> well, I was saying that the movie that was China censoring him. Yeah, it was. <laughs> no, I wasn't even saying anything against China. Um, but it's like Starship Troopers. You know, it's like on its surface, it was just a generic popcorn flick. But, but they don't like, treat like the audience that way. They yeah, don't but... ever treat the audience like, oh, well, you guys are just going to watch this for. The, you know, or I hate the, well, I don't hate it, but this, the term of, oh, you just need to turn your brain off and enjoy it. Not every movie you have to do that. You had yeah. to for Doom to enjoy it. Yes. <laughs> but that's also because that didn't require a whole lot of thought. Yes. <laughs> so I'm just saying that this movie, it never insults the audience. That's what I love about it. it, it even the, the parts where they're not flying in the planes and... They're talking. Only a few of those scenes kind of seem to drag. And, and I wouldn't even say drag. The, like Tom mentioned, the one scene where him and um, Charlie are talking in her house. Um, you can kind of sense Tom's inexperience acting there. Like, it's just not quite there. They don't quite have the chemistry, which was weird because a couple scenes before that in the bar, they had clear chemistry. So yeah. it is kind of weird. But that's just probably Tom's inexperience with acting at that yeah, point. Yeah, because he'd like, only been just, acting for three three years at that point or so yeah yeah that, yeah that required cocky tom cruise and he's like yeah i could do that but it's like now be sincere tom cruise like fuck it's cocky but slightly less that that's kind of how that scene felt i'm glad you both agree with me on that one well i'm just saying that um you know i just i really enjoy this movie it's it's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's in it's in my top ten for sure. Mm -hmm. And it with each subsequent viewing, I like it more and more. Just not because I get more out of the movie. Like I said, it's not Citizen Kane, but it's a, well, even Citizen Kane wasn't really Citizen Kane when you look back on it. Okay, maybe maybe another one. It's not it's not The Godfather. So it's, it's not a movie where I keep getting something more subtle, more and more and more. Well, we kind of are if you think about it. I mean, yeah, yeah, I've yeah, been finding more. that this was a personal story. I mean, I. We've seen a few films already, and some of those were "quote unquote" popcorn films. And this was a popcorn film for the '80s. But compare contrast, this was a much smarter film than some of the later films that would come along. That in it definitely, it definitely yeah. has the scaffolding of a uh, modern film. You can see where they built the scaffolding based off of this film. Mm -hmm. But again, it's like Nigel says: they don't treat their audience like they're idiots because you know back then you're still coming from movies. Yeah, there's an implied message, and you're gonna have to figure that out. Whereas, like modern, you know, ADHD movies just don't give a shit. They're gonna tell you exactly what you should feel. Yes, exactly. They they just don't. I don't know. It's just there's just uh, maybe. You know, I think part of the movie, like some of Tom's inexperienced acting, lends to some of the charm in the movie. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, like you, you said, because like, he's a 
junior, he's a young officer, doesn't even know how to really deal with his own emotions, and he's at odds with himself, you know? Mm -hmm. It's Which, like when you said, you know, with the house scene with uh, romantic love interests, like, when I thought was bad acting, you pointed out, it's like, well, it's, this is a serious moment, but maybe he's acting like he's acting like he's acting. It's like that layers of, like, when you're trying to convey what what is a serious moment for you, but you're also trying to get laid, so you're leaning into that a little bit more yeah. than you should. You're walking. He's walking on eggshells, except he's still wearing combat boots. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he's like, "I don't don't fuck this up. Don't fuck this up. Don't fuck this up." Yeah, it's like I'm gonna lay the drum on thick so I can appeal to her sense to get me laid. Yeah. Now yeah. keep in mind, I said that sarcastically. <laughs> yes, you, but also we've all seen people do that before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of those things. It's like I'm doing mental gymnastics to make his acting fit in with the scene. <laughs> but either way, it's this was a good. It's, it, let's put it like this: modern films, you couldn't do that because they would literally tell you how you should feel in that one. Yes. Like she would look at him and be like, "I feel like you're laying into that, so you can get me into bed." Yeah, or they would have kept doing, or they would have used the maybe the one take where Tom Cruise can actually cry, except it's not convincing at all and it looks fake. But they use it because he's actually crying instead of the the, the one where he's just we'll get not it post. Crying. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. yeah, he's breathing heavy, so they use that like that 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 scene where they're talking in her garden or backyard or whatever when they're talking in her house. It's an awkward scene for the acting situation, but it's still not as bad as like. The whole sand is coarse crap that was in Attack of the Clones. Like, that's overproduced, overdirected crap. Mm -hmm. It's an awkward scene for conversation, but it's still not as awkward and cringy. But it's okay, it's awkward, but it's not cringy. But the whole sand is coarse is very cringy. You know? <laughs> that it was a scene everywhere. Written. That was a scene written by someone who doesn't know what it's like to be 25 anymore. Yeah, or well, even when they're supposed to be married in Revenge of the Sith and the whole, the whole, I love you more, I love you more, I love you more. Like, people don't talk like that. Yeah, and and God, also yeah. keep in mind, that's exactly what Carrie Fisher said to George Lucas when they were filming A New Hope. <laughs> people See, don't talk like this. <laughs> yeah, people, that's why you need, you need help and you need writers to help you out when you're when you're yeah, weak in an area because you know, i'm just as bad when i when i'm writing a story and i'm writing two characters falling in love i suck at the dialogue i suck at it i'm so that's bad why you need the actors to take some level yeah. of improvisation yeah. i'm so bad at it like when i wrote a story with my friend peggy and i sent her the story and i'm like yeah the characters are falling in love i just i suck at the dialogue i'm so bad she goes oh you're always so hard on yourself let me read it and i'll i'll let you know so i sent her the, <laughs> i sent her i sent her the story i sent her the story and, tw and like literally 10 minutes later i get a message from her saying yeah people don't talk like that <laughs> <laughs> you know lucas needed a peggy oh my god well he got that in empire and jedi but you know he had too much money and time on the prequels yeah. Anywho, we're, we're we're uh, tangenting, and then I need to go to bed sometime tonight. Yeah. So I guess I, I guess our final thoughts are: Top Gun, good movie. We liked it. Mm -hmm. Would recommend. So. Yep. <laughs> and uh, it, again, we've uh, we've made up. We we've spent two weeks doing Doom and Pathfinder, two movies we really had to get through. And this week we and over the last two weeks we've done Starship Troopers and Top Gun, two movies that we all three of us thoroughly enjoyed. So, and the next couple weeks are going to be pretty darn good movies. Yeah, the next six weeks are going to be gold, gentlemen. We are going to be yeah, yeah. so much fun. I'm looking forward to it, guys. I'm not going to lie. Well, I think uh, at this point, we can call it a night. Thanks, everyone who is still listening. Bless your souls. Until next time, I have been Tom. I have I'm been Josh. Dan. I'm Josh. And I've been Dan. And this has been The Fire Pit. Thank you all for joining. Good luck out there. And all right, guys. Well, you guys you take care, and I will talk to you next week. Yep, guys. I'll see you guys next week. I look forward we'll see you to next week, week for Inner Space. Inner yes, Space next inner week. Inner Space next week. Good time. Boosh. Night, guys. Night, Peace. Guys. Night.